at the end of the day, I get it. So if there's the opportunity right now to build, there's a lot of capital, there's a lot of opportunity. You guys represent multiple states right now of service providers. So what would be your recommendations? Like, what would you tell your peers, other service providers? What would you tell them to do right now in order to get ahead of that, to get ahead of the curve? And also acknowledging though, that, you know, part of getting people excited and Brian, I thought you uh, captured it great about, there is an emotional element of inspiring your teams, right? I mean, there is that piece of it that if you do, you know, hard things about hard things, right? You got to get people excited and mo moving forward. And some of that goes beyond just the math. Well, so. I'll, I'll, I'll say one last thing and I'll, I'll let everybody respond, but a hundred percent, like hardest thing we we've done as a company probably ever. Um, and it's, it's, uh, it wears on people. It they 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 get frustrated and demotivated. I tell you the thing we did, and if you go to our website and just look at the videos, like just you know what motivates people is like the success stories, the stories of you know we have a plow train that's got two bulldozers, you know, in front of a plow, you know, yanking this plow through like concrete dirt you know just um creating solutions and just people we got a county commissioner that was you know a linebacker in college uh, big tough guy crying because his county got real broadband for the first time i got that on video that's the stuff that drives you know people that come to work every day and love their job and work really hard you know, and work long hours and get through some of the toughest work we probably have ahead of us for the next three years. And so if you go to our, I might have said website, but our, our Facebook page for Idea Tech, it's a lot of great stories. And that's what we, we literally took a part of our budget, a big part. And people don't like to do this. And right off the bat, it's like, this is for marketing in the middle of, you know, this push. And, and that, that small sliver of marketing pays huge dividends from motivation for community buy-in, et cetera, so. All right, what about the rest of you guys? What would you tell people? What would you tell your peers? I, I guess if I can jump in real quick and I, I kind of want to go twofold, you know, Daniel made the, the statement how, you know, you, you can't sell when you're in a growth phase because you, you're, you end up being behind. I go all the way back to 2007 and it's a great reference because as a cooperative, we were, you know, with fiber in a lot of our towns and we weren't yet offering television service. And so we knew the only way to, to essentially get enough market share to make it viable and to run the competitor out of our market um, was the pre-sell. So we were overbuilding um, our entire market, our three competitive towns we had and we were overbuilding side by side with with the competitor essentially of fiber to the home, and uh, we were we were holding events. We were doing, you know, come eat a hot dog and sign up for your service. Uh, but we didn't turn anybody up. We didn't turn a single soul up. It was just wait. Let's get the knit on. Let's get the fiber to the home. Get the services built. And what we did was the competitor was watching us do this, but wondering why nobody was turned up. And so what we did is we held off. And we turned up, we, we got every single, you know, person we could find, every person in the company was out turning up service. We turned up 550 customers in 72 hours. <laughs> and we told them, do not disconnect until your service is up and running and we tell you to disconnect. We will pay for the last month of your current service. The, our direct competitor, Mechanic Communications, in our three markets, lost 543 customers in two days. <laughs> and so feel good. <laughs> the second day, here's how, here's how it worked, right? So the second day, the operation manager there said, okay, it's 1.2 million. You want the plant, it's yours, but let all your brothers know this won't happen again. So I think in that regard, right, you, you pre-sold it. We're, you know, we're doing everything else, just like Daniel had talked about during, during the COVID, we laid fiber on the ground of 400 homes that didn't have fiber for free, mm -hmm. for free. 
to connect people up because in North Dakota, they're so rural and everybody was working from home and kids are working from home. We did it for free. And when we did it for free, now how many of those 400 customers that we ran fiber to whip fiber on the ground, zip tied to chain link fence, strung from you know laundry poles, I mean, just everything you could think of over snow banks to make it work, how many of those customers are we gonna are we gonna have left? Do we retain 20%? Do we retain 30%? You know, who knows, right? But at that point, the world stops. So what the hell's the difference? I mean, no one's doing anything and we never stopped, right? Just like Daniel's talking about what you, you push and push and push, right? That was, that was doing with our money, right? With the, with the understanding that at some point you'll be able to monetize it, right? But we got a lot of fiber that we're having to go pull back out, but fiber we're having to peel back. And, and that was a risk we were willing to take. But I, I think as you look forthcoming and you look at the process that, that telecoms are going through and, and, We've heard the term, term land grab happen at countless times, at least here in North Dakota, we're pretty rural, right? So the people that can grab the land that's available and the customers and the community connect grants, the broadband plan, all these different things, there's very few cooperatives in North Dakota that are willing to do that. There are some that are proactive and, and working like us, but um, the very few aren't, right? They're gonna sit and try to ride it out and use their ACAM money for the next seven years and, and then they'll figure it out, right? And I guarantee there's not a single person on this call who doesn't believe that in the near future, not a single person offers internet TV and phone is going to be anything but a pipe to the world. That's where we are all headed. We are all going to be a pipe to the world because just like Daniel alluded to, the providers of the world do not care about the pipe. They just want to be on it. That's all they care about. So you're going to end up being a provider of a pipe to the world. And are you going to have to offer these services? You know, maybe you do, right? But, but ultimately you're going to end up being out of the market because there's going to be so many applications that you can't collectively offer enough of them to, to be, you know, marketable in, in the market in which you have to. And, and I look at our population. I mean, we're in very rural North Dakota. The average age of our customer is North of 45 years old. And I tell people all the time, we're a cooperative. We are member owned. I'm not sitting in my office. I'm sitting in the member's office. They own this office. I don't own this office. It's not my office. It's their office. And so I look at that from the member standpoint and, we talk about it all the time. Somebody who's 50 and 65 years old, they care about the cooperative. They care about being a member of a cooperative because their mom was, and they are, and by God, by the cooperative for the cooperative. <laughs> their daughter and grandson want the best product at the cheapest price, and they do not care about their capital credit checks because <laughs> they're never going to see a dime anyways. <laughs> but we're seeing this, this concept <laughs> in this market thought process shift, right? And so we had to transition with that and go, okay, look at our market, right? And, and we, we had our 6,000 or 5,500 co-op customers that were co-op members. And we had these other 5,000 customers that were in ILEC that weren't cooperative members. And our co-op members fought for the last four years to not let them in because it's our cooperative and I'll be goddamned if the Metro people are going to be in our cooperative. <laughs> well, guess what? Effective about two weeks ago, we have more ILEC customers than CLEC customers for the first time ever. So how do you go about that? So I think, you know, I think Daniel ha makes a couple of great points, right? Uh, on the idea that the market shifts and the thought process shifts and, and the stories are great. And the, you know, winning the battle by pre-selling everybody and telling everybody, those are, those are great stories, right? But, but ultimately in 2007, we had the forethought to go, okay, how do we win, right? How do we win? How do we monetize that pipe? And now we don't have a competitor with the exception of Dish and Direct. We don't have a competitor. And the thing is, okay, you have the Verizons and the at ts of the world. Great. Who provides the fiber to their tower? We do. So they pay us either way, right? I mean, and then when there's so, you know, when the, when it goes down and you have the 99.9% .9 reliability and it goes down or there's a storm, whatever it may be, your fiber to the home is still there. And so I, I just really think that as we look forward into this, how many pieces of uh, and tools can you put on that, that piece of glass you have on the ground of the home? But more importantly, how stable can you make that piece of glass and how stable can you make your network? Because we're all in 10 to 15 to 20 years are going to be one thing and one thing only. We are so, going to be a pipe to the customer and that's it. And if you don't believe that, you're crazy because that's where we're going to end up. And it might be, it might be 20 years, who knows, right? But, but ultimately you're going to be a pipe to the world because you can't offer the same products for the same price in the same threshold that the rest of the market can.